So the hovercraft's coming along really well. I was really pleased that I actually got it hovering with the holes in the deck open. Um, that was the important part. If that hadn't worked, this whole project would have probably died at that point. Uh, but it did work, so then that leads us straight on to these parts, which are the deck ducts. So the idea of this is the air is coming up through the hole. As you can see there, that hole represents one third of the area of this duct here. There's another hole on this side, so that's two thirds, and the last third comes out around the edges here to inflate the skirt and make it hover. So that one third air goes into the bottom of this duct and then is directed either this way or that way or 50-50 and that's what makes it blow forward or go forward and go back. So I spent a while designing this on an AutoCAD program and within there is what I'm calling a divider plate. It's actually made of two plates um, and it's very hard to see obviously because this is now sheeted. Um, so what I've done is I've left the other one bare so you can see it. So this is the cut out version and uh, I originally cut these out of plywood and they were so heavy that I had to cut out the centres to uh, lose some weight. Um, but it's a useful one because it uh, allows me to show you the divider plate here. So I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see what I've done. It took quite a lot of designing this plate. So there you go, you can see these two dividers here and here and they're pivoted on that centre point there. And the idea is that will then move to direct the air either forwards or backwards. I'm going to connect the uh, transmitter so you can see it. So at the moment that is in the neutral position. The air is going to come up from below and it's going to come up here, it's going to hit the curved section, it's going to, some's going to come out here and some's going to come out there. And what I've designed the uh, plate to do, you'll see when I turn it, at its maximum there, the bottom part here seals against the edge and the top bit is very close to the point here in the middle. So all the air is now directed this way. And the same on the other way, it'll go this way and out that way. Um, it took me a while to work this one out. Um, I got the basic design done very quickly but I couldn't work out how to uh, mount the servo. I wanted to hide the servo and I was thinking maybe hide the servo in the hull um, but the problem with that was the uh, bottom sections actually overlapped so any rod going down to a servo would have had to have a slot in the, the um, divider plates. So in the end I had a bit of a uh, brainwave at one o'clock in the morning and I mounted the servo actually in here and the servo actually pivots and it's the servo horn that is attached to the outside so the servo horn stays still and the servo actually turns. Now that might sound a bit daft but actually it seems to work and if I show you on the one that's complete that's what you can see on the outside and on the other side I've actually brought the wires out through the rear pivot point here. So it's all looking very neat. Can't really see here. Can you see underneath? Yeah, you can see underneath a bit there. So I've now got to finish off this other one, mount them on the deck, and that is basically the build of the hovercraft finished. So don't worry, I'm not going to uh, show you loads of this. I'm just going to uh, do one and then fast forward a few and use this as a opportunity to do some narrating. So I think this process of um, cutting out the centre of the plywood and then adding balsa wood uh, basically reduces the weight in half. Potentially even more for the bigger sections. So it's worth doing even though it is a bit time consuming. What I'm hoping is to get these all done. Hopefully they'll be dry enough for me to put the pieces together in the base bit and then let that dry overnight and then I can work on the curve sections tomorrow. And while I'm mentioning the curve sections, um, just explain what they are. There's obviously their balsa wood again, but uh, to make the balsa conform to the uh, fairly tight circles underneath particularly, I've uh, used two layers of 1 16th balsa wood. 
So you cut the one layer out first, you uh, glue that in position, let that uh, dry overnight, and then the next day stick another layer on top and again let that dry. And I just use sellotape to hold the uh, bits in position while it's drying. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing, I've just glued around the edges, smear it in if you can, squeeze it in the joints to make it fairly airtight, not too worried, and then using a wet flannel just go over and wipe off the excess. Makes for a nicer finish. So it's been a little while since I did any of the uh, hovercraft, so I have to keep on reviewing the footage to see where I've got to. So the last time I was um, sticking the balsa into the uh, plywood, and you can see I've kind of jumped a few steps now, so there wasn't really anything to this. Once you've done all the bits of wood, got all the balsa wood in the middle, you just stick the, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, nine bits. So there's nine bits, just stick them all together. And what I tend to do on things like this, where I want to keep things dimensionally accurate, I make kind of little um, spaces and then I can uh, kind of slot things together to hold everything in place while the glue dries. Now once the glue had dried, uh, quick clean up and then I do this and again I've already explained that is one sixteenth balsa wood with two layers on. Do one layer, let it glue, uh, let it set, uh, do another layer on that one and there, there. Anyway, it takes a little while, uh, wasn't very interesting to record. So that's now done. The next thing to do is add the divider plates. So you can see I've built this one up. Um, again, I've made a little jig because you don't want this to set um, skewed. So I've made a little bit of wood and while it was gluing I just put that bit of wood in there. That made two, one for either end to keep it nice and square. So again, it's just little things I tend to do. So the next job for me is to put this into its housing. Uh, you can see on this side I've got the holes already pre-drilled for the servo horn. So the next thing is to glue the servo horn into there. Um, but before I can do that I need to uh, countersink these two holes and cut two little um, countersunk screws to hold the horn in place. So while that uh, glue is drying, it's only five minutes, I'll just show you the cab I've also uh, made and forgot to uh, film. Again, nothing really fancy about this, just uh, zoom in for you. Um, there's going to be one cab on the front and some kind of uh, cab on the back, just to cover the battery. There's actually going to be two batteries on this. And then this is just um, plywood again. And uh, the top bit I've also infilled with uh, balsa like everything else to keep the weight down. Uh, I have added lights. Um, I don't know how effective they'll be. Um, but it's useful sometimes debugging to have lights. Because I'm going to have a little controller in here that's going to do um, all the movements. So I've added lights. So the glue's now gone off. So the next task is to... Uh, slide the divider plate in. So I've made this um, quite a tight fit. I've 
routed the cable coming out the top here, that's quite important because you're going to have to feed it through the hole. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, I'm going to do this, but uh, you actually have to... Um... No, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Come on, focus. The servo horn will just jam on the edge and you just need to push it in a bit. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see this or not. So I'm just going to put it in and then you'll see what it looks like. A little bit of force to get it to sit in its home. So make sure it's square. Where are you, camera? Come on. Focus in there. So at the moment, it's sat on top of it. Get it there. Popped in and then pushed it down. So that's now seated correctly down there. And you can put a screw in in the front there. Camera keeps on losing focus. And then you can put a screw in the front there. Okay, so I've put the screw in the front. The next thing I need to do is drill out this hole and put a piece of tube in and then the, the um, carbon fibre goes through the tube to pivot on. Um, but to line everything up, what I've found is I've got a bit of 1 16th plywood there. All I do is slide that down there keep everything square. So that's gone down there and it keeps those two surfaces there and there parallel with the back of the housing. So now I should be able to drill this front hole and keep everything lined up. Okay, so that's looking in line. I'm quite happy with that. I'd actually need to go to seven millimeters, so I'm going to uh, try and be a bit more careful with that one. Okay, that looks good. Where's my bit of tube? Right, so I've cut these two little brass tubes. And the next stage is to glue them into the two places, which is obviously in the rudder there and in the duct over there. Uh, but I need to do this in um, one quick go, so I need to glue them in, refit the uh, rudder, and then put a piece of carbon rod, or sorry, tube, through both holes to make sure they line up. I need to do that before the glue sets. Okay, so I'll let that set now, and then uh, that's this side done. Well, no, it's not quite, is it? I need to put the uh, servo wires through that tube, cut the tube down, and put the servo wires through.
So I hope you've enjoyed this so far. The puff bolts are now made and I've made the cab as well. So basically that's the hovercraft complete. And as you've seen, it works quite well in my kitchen. Now the kitchen is almost ideal in that it's a lovely smooth surface. So the next video is going to have a look at testing it outside in a car park and then if I'm brave on water. So again, I hope you've enjoyed this video and please subscribe and I'll see you next time.